so I think I want to kind of uh, just pan pan up a little. You know what I mean? Just just pan up a little. Tilting. Okay, stop. Uh, split the difference. Come back a little. Splitting the difference. Uh, stop, stop. That's good. Uh, just just pan pan around and left pan just a little. Around. Stop there. Okay, good. Uh, Hold. Um, I haven't. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Nice. Do you maybe want to check out a uh, a cool new feature? Yeah. What is uh what is the new feature? Push Moco. Push Moco. Sounds cool. So um, I can just put it into teach mode and then uh, you can place the camera wherever you want by hand. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll check it out. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're exploring a super cool new collaborative programming method called PushMoco. We'll learn what it is, how to use it, and why it's such an impactful tool. As the name implies, PushMoco is a tool that allows creative collaborators to physically move the camera into position by hand making it more intuitive for everyone involved. Uh, this innovation speeds up shot creation, delivering more dynamic shots in less time. If you've been following the series, then you know that Flare works by using keyframes on a timeline to interpolate smooth paths for the camera to follow. And until now, piloting the camera to find these keyframes usually involves some sort of human interface device like a keyboard and mouse or a game controller. PushMoco breaks down that barrier and allows us to pilot the camera in a way that feels almost second nature. Who knows, maybe someday in the near future we'll be able to just tell the robots what to do with our minds. PushMoco works by sensing your physical inputs and controlling how much resistance is applied at each joint. Let's go get everything set up so you can see how it works. Alright, so once you have everything set up physically, the first thing that you want to do is calculate the center of mass and payload, and it's a lot easier than it sounds. All we have to do is click this little button right here, calculate the payload, um, and I like to have the camera facing forward in kind of this neutral orientation. We're going to hit the reset button store the pose, and then we're going to tilt the camera about 90 degrees. This button will appear, we'll hit store pose, uh, then we'll pan. So you're using the last three axes in the chain, about 90 degrees. Keep going until it pops up, there we go, store pose, and we're going to roll the camera 90 degrees. Again, it's just the last three axes in the chain, store pose, store kinematics, there we go and we can see that the payload has updated to 3.3 kilograms. As you can see, this really didn't take that much time, but this is one of the most critical steps when working with these collaborative robots. And the reason is because, remember, when we put it into PushMoco mode, the robot's trying to work with you to move the camera, and so it's trying to hold the camera still. And the resistance is based on the center of mass and payload calculation. So if Flare thinks that the camera is heavier than it actually is, uh, then it's applying resistance to hold that heavy camera still, which means that it's lifting to counteract gravity, and it will just lift the camera up until it either collides with something or trips itself out. So uh, the, the opposite is true. If it thinks that the camera is lighter than it actually is, it will just drop the camera into the floor whenever you put it into push moco mode. So again, do not skip this step. Always calculate the center of mass and payload. Thank me later. <laughs> All right, now that we have that out of the way, we can get to the fun part, programming. PushMoco can be activated or deactivated directly in Flare or by pushing this button on the robot. If you're not able to see the computer, now might be a good time to turn on application sounds which can be activated from the tool menu. Whenever you engage the motors, the LEDs on the base and on the remote will turn red. And whenever you switch into PushMoco mode, they will turn green. PushMoco does work with the track as well if you opted for that, but you will have to push this button that's located on the track base to enable it. Now for the fun part, just pilot the camera by hand, rack focus to your subject, store some keyframes, and watch your dynamic move come to life. If you're using PushMoco with Mimic, you can record kind of a more one-to-one -one handheld path uh, and then play that back as many times as you want. Just know that there is going to be a little bit of resistance. It's not exactly just like a, a deadweight camera. Uh, so you are going to have to be a little bit more intentional with how you move the camera if that's the effect that you're going for. Now I'm going to take you guys through the process of programming a two to three point move using PushMoco so that you can see how simple it is. All right, let's line up our first shot. We'll push the button, light turns green, we're free to move the camera. We will just kind of line up our composition here. Boop. I will adjust focus. You can do this with the hand unit if you want, um, or you can just do it directly inside of Flare. We will store that as position one. We'll add another line. We will move the robot to another position over here. Rack focus. 
And the focus is going to tell Flare where the target is. Waypoint stored. So now, if we back run this move, Point ready to shoot. Pre shooting. Should have a nice move. Stays locked onto our subject. And that's how easy it was. And if the horizon's ever not level, all you have to do is go roll level. Roll level. And it will automatically ready to shoot. Pre shooting. level the horizon for you. That wasn't too bad, but what about a three-point move? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. All we do is go into push moco, we'll add a line. We'll find another composition. Rack focus to our subject. Waypoint stored. And just like that, we have a three-point move. Let's see what it looks like. Shoot. Pre -roll shooting. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to just pilot the camera by hand using push moco, find your keyframes, and let Flare generate a nice smooth path for the camera to follow. But what if you want to go for more of like a handheld look? This is where we can use Mimic, and Mimic is a feature that's built into Flare that allows you to kind of record whatever is happening live, whether that's moving the robot by hand or pulling focus by hand, and then you can play that back over and over again. I'll show you what that looks like now. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to View, Mimic, and you're gonna set all of the main axes to Learn. And we're going to make sure the robot is in push moco mode, which it is, and we will hit start. It's gonna start recording, and we can just kind of float around and stop and use recording. It will automatically set these axes into playback. We can take it out of Push Moco, and now we can learn focus. So we'll set focus to learn. I will disable the focus so that I can drive it from here. I'll find our target. I'll hit forward run. It's going to prompt me. I'm going to go to the first position. Forgive my poor focus pulling, but this is just to give you an idea. <laughs> so we're going to hit shoot. It's going to start recording. There we go. So we have now recorded the focus data, the pool that I just did, and we can play this back as many times as we want. You can see that focus has now switched automatically into playback as well. I'm gonna double tap the function button to put this into child mode so it's no longer the parent, uh, which is important so that these two are not fighting each other. Now I can re-enable the focus axis, set the camera to record, forward run, go to, and we'll hit shoot. And just like that, we have a move that was completely handheld uh, and focus that was pulled by hand that we can now play back as many times as we want. So why is this such an impactful tool? Honestly, the collaborative nature makes the whole programming process more enjoyable for everyone involved. Not everyone gets to work with robots every day, so being able to share that experience while letting them physically pilot the camera by hand and then having the robot repeat what they just did is pretty cool to witness. It can also be more efficient in many cases. Sometimes you just want to grab the camera and place it where you want without having to move a bunch of equipment. Even if you're just locking off shots, it's nice to be able to find so many different angles quickly that you can revert back to as long as you store the position. Lastly, it's refreshing to see a tool that's designed with humans and collaboration in mind since it seems like every day I see some new article talking about how AI is just going to take all of our jobs. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into MRMC Academy. Don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. And uh, hit me up on Instagram if you'd like to connect. Till next time. Peace. <laughs>